is Luke from Pro Co-op Agronomy with your uh, third installment of our digital communications this week. Um, today we're going to talk about the probably the most important part of the farming operation that you're getting you're all getting ready to do right now, and that's seeding. Um, when you think about seeding, we need to focus in on how do we protect the genetic potential of that seed going in the ground. That's really the whole point of it is to get that stuff in the ground, protected up, um, and so it can raise a crop with the most potential, obviously. And there's things in the later in the season that obviously affects that potential, but if you screw up at seeding time, uh, there's no making up for it. So today, um, we're just gonna chat a few things that th to ponder. Um, you know, the first thing is a seed and variety selection, obviously. Most of you guys have that figured out by now. Um, but as you're considering your varieties, uh, think about what that response to population is. Some, popula some um, varieties actually have a higher or lower per percentage of a response to population. Um, you might be able to tiller out more with certain ones. You might be able to actually uh, raise longer, longer uh, heads on fewer main stems with others. So think about that when you're picking a variety. Your air drill setup, obviously that's huge. There are so many different versions of that. Um, row spacing plays a, plays a factor, fertilizer placement, your opener depth, or I shouldn't say your opener width, and actually what will it be able to get through trash like this. This is an example that we talked in, in the last video of all kinds of weeds that just didn't get sprayed last fall. And so you see the carcasses here, they've actually gone to seed. And even though the soil is really cold today, there's all kinds of weeds coming up that, that needs to be burned down. So think of how your drill is gonna to react to that because that should, in, that, in theory, still affect your final seeding rate. And then one thing that's very overlooked, I believe, is population calculations. So instead of the old uh, I'm going to seed a bushel, a bushel and a half, whatever it is. Well, how many how many seeds are in that bushel? How many? We need to be looking at how many pounds per acre we're seeding, based off of what our final established per acre population needs to be. And so, to do that, you know, today I just I already did this example, but we we have a little gram scale here, and so counting out your seeds, counting out a hundred seeds and then weighing that and doing the math backwards to see how many seeds per pound, that's huge. And then when you have that, you can, you can also factor in your germination test. And hopefully you got a cold vigor test as part of the germination. Um, just because something props a, pops a sprout doesn't mean it's gonna be very vigorous popping out of the ground. So make sure you calculate that into your equation too, as far as the final seeding number. Um, and then of course, going back to the beginning, we wanna still protect that genetic potential. Uh, the, the world record wheat, I think, is somewhere around 250 bushels an acre. No, that wasn't in Daniels County, um, but that same seed variety could be raised here. It's just the stresses, once we put that in the ground, usually start chopping that down from 250, 200, 100, 50, 40, whatever it is. So how do we give that seed the best chance to get going? Um, with that, you know, we're out here today. It's uh, April 14th. If I, if I dig in the soil, and this has a lot of duff, mind you, the ground isn't completely frozen, but it is probably 32, 33 degrees right now. Most, most uh, cool season broadleaves and grass crops require 40 degrees to even germinate, but that's not saying it's gonna be very vigorous and put on healthy roots right away. We do have a lot of moisture in the ground, um, which is a great thing, and I think it goes pretty deep. But with that and all this, all this organic matter laying here, you're gonna, it's a perfect environment for disease, root rot, things like that. Um, fusarium, rhizoctonia, take all, common bunt. Uh, sorry, that's not, that's not the root rot, but it's another effect of not seed treating. Um, Ascochyta in and post crops, pythium. There's there's all kinds of things that live in this soil every year regardless of your rotation. 
So I don't want to go into any specifics as far as uh, the, the qualities of seed treat, but it, it, when you think about what to use and what to, to go with there, um, there's four things I'd suggest. What, uh, what the, is the disease spectrum? Are there several modes of action in it or just one? The insect protection, do you have a history of wereworms? You know, that's another thing we've been seeing of more and more every year is wereworms. And in, in stubble like this, this is a perfect environment for them to just live underneath here. And uh, they like that cool, cool wet stuff. Cutworms can also be uh, a problem in here too, but that's more of a later season insect insecticide application. The third thing is help with vigor. So anything that you can do to help that seed wake up earlier, um, put on roots faster, and go for those nutrients quicker is gonna absolutely directly affect how your stand looks now and later. And within that vigor range, there's several things historically we've had. We've had stamina, uh, that is one of the active ingredients and in obvious in pulses. There's vibrance. Vibrance has been in Cruiser Max Vibrance cereals and pulses. Both are great products. Um, and then a new one that we're starting to work with the last couple years based off of what we've seen in Canada from our friends up there is combining that vigor effect with nutrition. So yes, you're putting your fertilizer down either in a side band, in furrow, and uh, in the mid-row bander, those are your macros. But what does that seed need to wake up and be going right away? It's not, it's not looking for nitrogen right now as soon as it, it, it uh, cracks. It's looking for things like phosphate, zinc, boron, things like that. And um, so if you combine that vigor effect of things that are in, say, vibrance or obvious, or in this case, precede, Precede is the is the line that we're working with from Canada. Um, we're actually using biostimulants, amino acids, seaweed seaweed extracts, and things like that that have been proven to actually uh, flip a genetic switch within that seed and say, nope, it's not too cold. Nope, it's not too wet. Nope, you're not surrounded by ice on top of the ground. I'm going to wake up and get after it. And these things are a new relatively new to the egg industry, but I do believe out of sorting through all the stuff out there and false claims, I, I have a lot of faith in it. And just to show you uh, an example of precede treated stuff from last year, we've got Durham here at the grower, grower split a field. And what he did was both were, both of these samples came from Cruiser Max Vibrance treated areas so you're talking you've got your disease protection something that fit his operation and then wereworm protection too this over here did not have pre-seed this did now are you going to get results like this every single time maybe not is it always going to equate to 15 bushel difference or something crazy like that probably not but what he did was give that plant a lot quicker start and it got rooted down better that resulted in better stock strength. Also went into tillering when, when your heads are getting formed and the head length is getting formed and all that. And so this was actually a huge yield difference. And so I think as we get going into 2020 and things are really cold, fairly fairly wet, um, I'd consider something like that. It's a, It doesn't take much of a bushel advantage to, to pay for something like that and it helps that vigor get going. So in summary, I mean, that's, those are the main things I wanted to talk to you guys about on seed treatments. There's a, all kinds of options out there. Let's sort through them. Talk to your pro co-op agronomist about what makes sense. Maybe you don't do every acre with something like Precede, but maybe you try it somewhere, see for yourself. Uh, but the main thing is, is make sure you protect that genetic potential of that seed. All right, thank you.